Hello everyone, this is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric. We are your industrial service center. Automation, controls, drives, motors, we do it all. If you have any questions, just visit us at precision-elec or precision-elec.com or you can call us anytime as well. Today, we're gonna to cover advanced starting methods on the SM vector variable frequency drive. For those of you who don't really understand what an advanced starting method is, I consider an advanced starting method anything that deviates from the normal basic press a button to start, press the button to stop, or turn a switch to start, turn a switch to stop. So essentially anything that deviates from that standard starting control is considered an advanced starting method because it deviates from the common, commonly used. The most popular is the first one we're going to cover. And so first thing I need you to do is pull up your manual. Like I always do, I always have you pull up the manual. Everything's in here. You just got to kind of got to go through it and make sense of it if you can. And if you need help, call us. But the uh, start method we're looking at is on parameter 110. And it gives you a whole bunch of different options for how to start your drive. And out of the box, it's set to normal, which means if I actually just turn a switch, it'll start. Right now I have no power on it. But if I just turn a switch, it'll start because that's how I have mine set up. Or if I press the start button, essentially it needs a start command. That's, that's how it's set up out of the box. The first one we're going to go over, though, is number one, which is start on power up, which means that if I set parameter 110 to one, the drive will actually start as soon as I apply power to the drive. And here is an example of that. I'm going to apply power to the drive. I've already pre-programmed 110 to start on power up. Notice it didn't start, but that was just because I didn't have my run command. So let me go ahead and do it again. That's an important lesson actually to take from this is that it won't start on power up if you don't have some kind of a run command programmed for it. So that's something you need to make sure you have. On power up, it needs to have a signal wire that tells it which direction to run. See, that time it did it. So essentially, I could have it run forward or run reverse. If you watch my previous videos, either the, uh, the start stop push button one or the selector switch, selector switch would be the preferred method for this because I can maintain a constant connection. Whereas with the push buttons, you always have to physically apply a little electrical signal from a rising edge. So for the start on power up, it's better to have either a selector switch or some kind of a jumper. You could just wire a hardwired jumper between four and 13A. That way it would always just start forward as soon as you powered it up. The second start method is start with a DC brake. Essentially what this does is it allows you to apply a DC brake to the drive as it's starting. And this is usually not recommended unless you have a specific motor that's designed to handle that current that's injected into the motor during the DC braking. It says here, when start command is applied, drive will apply DC braking according to parameter 174 and 175 prior to starting the motor. So essentially what they're, what they're saying is before we actually run the start, we're going to inject some current into the motor to stop it, and then we're going to start. And there may be a number of reasons you might want to do that. You may want to actually make sure that if there's any coasting rotation occurring, you want to make sure you stop it before you start again. So it just depends on your application whether that would apply to you or not, but that is an option. Number three on the advanced starting method is auto restart. Auto restart's extremely useful for like remote telemetry systems. I get a lot of phone calls on those or irrigation systems where they're pretty far away. And essentially if the drive faults out for some reason, maybe there's a power blip because it's in a remote location, you want the drive to at least try to restart itself. And so what auto restart does is it actually clears the fault it attempts to restart the drive, and if it doesn't restart the first time, it'll try to clear the fault again, and it'll try again, and it'll keep doing that up to five times, and it does it at different time intervals. It doesn't say it in the manual specifically what those intervals are, but first it does it every 15 seconds for the first two tries, then it's every 30 seconds for the second two tries, and then it's 60 seconds for the last try. If it doesn't start on the last try, it's actually gonna finally fault out and require a power cycle for you to get it running again. But essentially at that point, you've determined that something's wrong with the system. If the drive can't restart itself after like two to three minutes, there's something else going on. And so that's actually a real useful one. Uh, the fourth option is the auto restart with DC brake. And essentially it's the same exact auto start method with the DC brake where it applies the DC brake first and then auto restarts. So it's gonna to attempt to auto restart if it successfully restarts, 
it'll inject that DC breaking into it, and then it'll actually start. So it's the exact same as the auto restart, except for it injects that DC breaking in first. The fifth option, actually all these five through eight, five through eight, these are all different variations of what's called a flying restart which is the opposite of the DC brake. Like the DC brake's gonna inject voltage to try to stop the motor before it starts. The flying restart is gonna say, hey, I'm already spinning, just try to restart while it's still spinning. You know what I mean? So if we're in the middle of a motion, like a coast to stop, and we just like maybe the pump is still spinning because the drive faulted out, but then it came back on before the pump stopped spinning because maybe there's a lot of inertia there then it's gonna to try to auto restart it while it's spinning right where it left off. So it's not gonna to try to essentially slow it down or speed it up. It's gonna start right where it left off and restart it back up to the speed you had it running at. And there's just different versions of flying restarts and you wanna leave this, read this little note section as to why, as to where and when you would use those appropriate restarts. Because again, it's all, it's all application specific. And if you have any questions, I mean, you can always call us. Like we can help you kind of navigate through uh, what restart kind of applies best to your application. For most customers, I would say, they fall under that just start on power up or the standard auto restart. Those are usually the ones we end up talking to people about the most because people either have it on a remote station and they don't want to have to go out there every time it trips, they at least want it to try to restart or they don't want to have to apply a start command every time they turn on their drive and so they just want it to automatically start when they power it up. So that's pretty much all there is to this video. Those are all the advanced starting methods. Now we can go over the stop methods here real quick too, because this is an advanced start and stop methods. That's parameter 111, but these are real, real, real easy to understand because there's really only four of them. You have the coast to stop, which means that when the drive stops, it's just gonna coast. In other words, it's gonna rotate and let inertia slow it down until it slows down on its own. You have a coast with DC brake, which means you're injecting some DC injection braking into it while it coasts so that the DC injection braking will slow it down. And you have ramp, which means that it will attempt to stop as quickly as possible. Ramp is really popular, but it can cause issues with DC bus over voltage because that energy when you're ramping down a motor has to go somewhere. And that usually ends up going back up onto the drive onto the DC bus. And if you don't have a brake module with resistors to dissipate that energy. It just stays in the drive and the drive trips on a DC bus fault. So you may have to adjust your deceleration times if you're running into a DC bus fault issue. If you can't dial it in as quick as you want it, you may just need to get an external resistor with, uh, with a brake chopper. And we actually sell all those as well. If you call us, we can help you size it, find the right one for your application. And uh, that's basically ramp to stop. And then the third option is ramp with a DC brake, which is pretty aggressive because the drive's already trying to stop it as quick as possible, but you're also now injecting DC voltage into the motor in order to stop it as well with DC injection braking. And again, you only want to do DC injection braking if you have a motor specifically designed to handle that extra, that extra current going into it because it's gonna, it'll run it hot. We had some customers who were injection braking at zero speed and they just sit there and cook their motors. So it's not something you want to do unless you know your motor can handle it. You can call your motor manufacturer and ask them if, they, if you can do it. Usually it's okay in small doses, but it just depends on, on your application and what you're doing. So that's all there is to this video. That's advanced start and stop methods. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Visit our website at precision-elec.com. That's precision-elec.com. We're your industrial service center. Controls, automation, motors, drives, we have and do it all, been doing it for 30 years, family owned small business. Don't hesitate to ask questions. And again, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video.